Hi, it's Scottish Mudlark, I'm with Nicole and Craig. Today you join us in Angus. We're on a golden sandy beach, the tide's out, there's a huge stretch of beach for us to search. So let's get on, let's see what we can find. So I think we're going to start over there and then we'll make our way along this cove, which is the former harbour, uh, because it'll be the first area that'll be covered by the tides coming in and then we can go down that bit of the beach, okay? Yeah. I think this is definitely among the nicest that we've ever seen. I mean, out at St Andrews they find beautiful stones as well, but just look at these. They're really gorgeous. Beautifully coloured pebbles. This one here, I'm not even sure if that's glass. I suspect it's uh, maybe quartz, but it could be glass. It's absolutely pure. So nice. We'll be taking a bunch of these back with us. So we've just arrived. We've just walked down onto the beach. Mm -hmm. It's an absolutely gorgeous afternoon. The tide's coming in just mm -hmm. now. And you've already been finding some really lovely things. Yeah, I found one piece of uh, Victorian pottery and I found some really, really lovely colourful pebbles. So I'm going to collect a couple and put them in a wee bottle. There's some jasper there, there's an agate, probably some quartz, but they're really, really nice colours. Excuse me for moving round and <laughs> putting shadow against these lovely little pebbles. The reason I'm doing that is the water's coming in behind me and I suspect it may be louder than me. <laughs> After all, the ocean is huge. <laughs> No, they're really lovely, aren't really they? nicely coloured wee pebbles, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. Well, I think Nicole's collecting little rocks here, these beautiful wee pebbles that we have all over this area. So many beautiful colours, really nice. But we're going to get along the beach and see if we can find some glass, maybe some other things as well. I'm not having very much luck finding glass here. Finding a few pieces, but mainly this area is just filled with these absolutely gorgeous little gems. So are you having much luck down there? There's virtually no glass here, but I've picked up a couple of these uh, white quartz pieces. Oh, watch yourself, the tide's coming in. <laughs> And I think you. we can make something with these white pieces. So we've come a bit further up the beach to see what we can find. We weren't really finding any uh, sea glass down there or any pottery, but some beautiful, uh, beautiful wee pebbles. Now we did find some sea glass, we found one nice wee bit, a wee bit of pottery here though, no markings, very plain piece. You can have a look at this, I just found a wee piece of pottery, I've been mm -hmm. finding a couple of blank pieces of pottery, uh, but this piece looks like it might actually have something on it, what do you think? <laughs> Hmm, it does look like there's a pattern on it, but I'm kind of guessing it might just be a rust stain. Okay. It's really nice and smooth though. I've also found a couple of plain pieces of pottery and one piece of sea glass. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So that's only like two pieces of sea glass we've found today then. <laughs> yep. Let's get on up the beach then, see if we can find some more sea glass. Ah, now I do believe that this is called a hagstone. Yeah, yeah, there's a hole all the way through that. I think we can call that a hagstone. I'll take that along as well. Let's go see that piece of glass Nicole's just found. It's just down here. It's a lovely, lovely mermaid's tear. Let's have a peek. Yeah. That's very nice. It's a really nice color as well, that piece. Isn't it? And it's a perfect tear shape. I think it'll go really nice with one of those white quartz pieces. 
So that's actually a piece of security glass. I'm going to turn it around and you can see there's a wire in it. So it was uh, once well, security glass um, and that's a plain white piece. Okay. What have you found? I've got a couple of things. There's a wee piece of uh, ceramic there again and uh -huh. I believe that's a hagstone. All right. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. And a cute little one as well. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's nice. Very cool. We're not finding much of it, but this is like I think the fourth or fifth piece of sea glass we've found so far. It's quite a nice piece, really nicely frosted. It's a good size. Wow, this is a really nice big wishing stone here. I think it's a wishing stone, it certainly is. We were actually up here a few days ago and we found another wishing stone around this size as well with a very similarly uh, huge uh, piece of quartz there in the ring. That's quite big. <laughs> we shall take it though and if I get a chance I'll make a wish. I think that's the nicest wee piece of sea glass that I've found today. I thought it might even be a marble at first. It's so rounded but it's not. I'm pretty sure it's just a wee blob of sea glass, but it's such a lovely wee colour that one. So nicely frosted. Definitely be taking that along. Here's a nice piece. Lovely drop of sea foam goodness. Very nice. Mm-hmm. I'm taking that. Well, the further we come along, the more of this uh, sea foam sea glass we're finding, which is a good thing. I mean, the, the little pebbles that we were finding earlier on were really, really beautiful. I know that Nicole makes much more use of this kind of stuff, though. Still, it's going to be interesting to see what she makes of those pebbles. In a wee change to our usual format, this week we're going to be putting out the roundup, the jewellery making and some extra scenes in a new video that's going to come out on Sunday. So keep an eye out for that. I found a lovely piece of sea glass and a hagstone. Okay, very cool. Yeah. So yeah, we tend not to find hagstones. No. So this seems to be the place for them. Uh-huh. Well, this one looks like it would be perfect for a necklace. <laughs> oh, very cool. <laughs> So this beach is incredibly quiet, apart from one or two dog walkers it's just us. If there is a downside to this, it's uh, this stuff that you can see in short just now, all the seaweed. It's, uh, it's making a bit of a stink. Now I heard a few O's, have you made multiple finds? I have, yeah, do you want to see them? Yeah, very cool. <laughs> So that's quite a wee collection you have there. Yeah, yeah. I was looking up here in the tide line where I know there's going to be plastic and I found what I was looking for. But I also found this lovely gemstone. Very cool. Yeah, and although it's plastic, I'm still very happy with it. Yeah, it's still a gem, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. And then I found these uh, this bit of fishing lure. There's a, a hook on it somewhere, but... Yeah, let's be careful with the hook. Uh -huh. It's got a little fishy on it and some beads and we're going to reuse that. Okay, cool. So we're going to take the beads. Are we going to take the wee fishy? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're taking the whole thing. Okay, let's go with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, you found sea glass. So yeah, I think that's the best of the stuff I've found. Nice wee wishing stone there. A couple of wee bits of sea glass. Yeah, there's some really nice sea glass. It's lovely frosted and that little drop, that's almost turquoise. Yeah, that's a nice wee piece, I thought. Mm-hmm, and this looks like a lovely banded agate. Oh, cool. Really nice, and that's a shell, isn't it? Yeah, that's a bit of shell. I think it was really nice. It has a nice feel to it. It's really mm -hmm. nicely smoothed off. Okay, very cool. Good cool. finds. Yeah. Very organic finds today. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. So Nicole just told me that she's picked up some plastic fishing line and is about to tell you why it's worth doing it for the little rewards you might receive. Yeah, yeah, I picked this piece up and I've noticed there's a tiny blue glass bead inside there. 
Okay, that's among the smaller glass beads that we've ever seen, I think. Uh, you can just see it. Once we get that back home and get it all disentangled, you'll be able to get a good look at that. Yep, and it's beautiful. Lovely. Mm -hmm. That's a nice wee find for today. Yay! More of these wee gem pieces. They're really nice. Sea foam. This one's got a couple of shiny uh, spots on it. But it's still a very nice wee piece of glass. There's my fishing line. Any beads in that one? <laughs> Not in this one, but we're taking it because we have something in mind for it. Oh, we do? Uh-huh. <laughs> it's a funny thing seeing all this seaweed here on the beach. And as I said, it's decomposing. It's a wee bit smelly. It reminds me that one of the names of this place way back in the day was either Smelly Harbour or Stinky Haven or something like that. We'll check that out when we get back to the house and let you know. The other thing to mention here is we are on the coast today, we're not in a river. Normally we're on the foreshores of either the River Tay or the River Forth. But today we're on the coast and just off to this side is the North Sea. So as I'm fond of saying, if I were to jump in there and go for a very long swim, I'd end up in Norway. How cool is that? The real question then is, is this old or is oh. this a very recent one? We've got a nice wee swing top stopper. It's quite worn. There's still a little bit of glaze on there it feels like. Uh -huh. um, there's no, no rubber ring yet. You can see it's quite worn here uh -huh. and around the edge. So I don't know, that could be quite old then. I think so. There's virtually nothing around here. No glass, no people littering. So I think that's got to be a really old one. Yeah. Cool. That's very cool. It's shocking white though, so it might glare a little bit <laughs> against the darker surfaces here. But that's a very cool find. Yay. Oh, yeah, the little uh, little channel there's blocked. Cool find. My guess is that because very few people actually make their way along this end of the beach, or at least this far up, <laughs> that. Oh, Nicole's just found something. Now, <laughs> my suspicion was that because very few people make their way up this side of the beach, this is where we're most likely to find something quite cool. 
So I just find that swing top stopper and Nicole's found something cool but you know it's not it's not everybody's idea cool. Uh -huh. Let's take a close peek. It'll be obvious. <laughs> it's <laughs> utterly obvious. Let's have a look and see what letter we've got there. Ah, maybe it's a letter, maybe it's no. Maybe it's a spaceship. Oh. No, it's a letter. It's a wee E. Oh, a wee E. Not sure if we've got any E yet. An E. <laughs> yeah. Well, now we have an E. Yay, cool. Very cool. Tiniest wee piece of sea glass just there as well. Oh, yeah. I'll take that too. Yeah, why not? So, Nicole's been finding more hagstones. Yeah. Did you know they're supposed to ward off evil? I know nothing about hagstones. <laughs> yeah, I think you can uh, put them on a line and then put them like in the garden and then they're supposed to ward off evil. So we need lots more to ring our house. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Soon after we started this channel last year, we were asked if we collected hagstones. At the time, we hadn't really thought to pick these interesting rocks up, nor had we seen very many of them around. Today, up here in Angus, they were hard to miss, so we thought, why not collect a few and tell you a little bit about them. Hagstones are often known as adder stones or druid stones. Generally, these stones are composed of flint, though pretty much any stone with a hole in it is accepted as an adder stone these days. Early accounts of them can be found in Pliny the Elder's 22nd volume of natural history. Pliny's style is a bit thick by today's standards, so I'll paraphrase what he has to say about them. Pliny refers to these adder stones as eggs, a term he attributes to druidic or pre-Christian practice and belief. According to Pliny, these stones are formed when a bundle of snakes come together in summer months and bind themselves together with saliva. The stone is said to form inside this bundle of snakes, Pliny calls it a serpent's egg, and some say the holes are made as snake tongues lap against the stone. When the stone emerges from the bundled snakes, it must be caught before it falls to the ground. Then the lucky catcher must flee and cross water before the snakes catch up with them and kill them. According to Pliny, the stone itself is said to bestow incredible good fortune on the holder. Aside from what Pliny has to say, we find a wealth of folkloric detail concerning these hag stones. In many Celtic traditions, the stones have a vast range of protective and revelatory uses. The stones can be strung and worn to protect the wearer against curses. They can be hung on a bedstead to ward off nightmares. Hung in various places around the home, or even worked into a building's walls to seal them against supernatural creatures and attacks. Farmers also found many uses for hagstones. There are stories of them being tied to or hung onto animals to prevent the fae folk or witches from harming them or depleting their energy. Hagstones have been hung on the horns of cattle to stop the fae folk from milking cows in the night. These stones have been attached to horses or hung in stables to prevent the fae or witches from riding them through the night and leaving them exhausted and of no use to a farmer come sunrise. But hagstones are said to do more than offer a barrier against supernatural foes. They can also allow humans to see into the world of witches and the fae. In some lore, we can look through the hole of a hagstone to make the barriers that block the supernatural world from human sight drop away, revealing a world beyond human perception. I've hardly scratched the surface of this topic. Hagstones can be found in many museums of witchcraft and the supernatural and it seems that there are as many stories as there are examples of these interesting wee stones. It's been a gorgeous day. It's been really nice and warm. It's starting to get a wee bit cold now. And as you can probably see, it's getting very hazy as the afternoon winds on into evening. So we're going to get ourselves back along to the car and we shall have a look at our best finds when we get back to the house. You never know, we may yet find our best finds because we're going back to the car. While we're on the way there, why don't you subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to the channel? 
yet another wishing stone. Oh, look at that. I've never seen one like that before. That's very cool. It, it's not a wishing stone. It has these weird zigzag lines in it. I'll take that along because I've just never seen one like that before. Check this out. Have you ever seen a wishing stone that looks anything at all like this? Oh, that's now, funny. Follow that line. Yeah, yeah, I see it. <laughs> no, I've never seen a wishing stone like that before. That's really cool. It's very oh, odd, isn't it? That's twice. That's yeah, on yeah. two lines. Very <laughs> angular. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. We have to take that one. Cool, yep. Now this is interesting. I'll try and stop crunching through this. Uh, so this one, I think, oh it doesn't, it looked like it had a wee leg on it, but it was this wee stone underneath it that I saw. Now that looks like it's probably been a tile or something. You can see, very thick compared to some of the other pieces we've found. Well, we're having some luck with graphic uh, <laughs> plastic finds. Mm -hmm. So I'm circling the coal so that we can get some sun on our face there. Aha, uh -huh, okay. What you got there? I've got push pop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that quite clearly says push pop. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how old it is. Um, if it's still made, it's what, obviously some sort of sweetie or candy. Yeah, it was a long kind of candy. If I remember correctly, it kind of came in like a lipstick uh, shaped tube. Oh but my. obviously, as you can see, quite a bit bigger and wider than a lipstick. Ah. Uh, but it was a kind of rock candy. All right. I wonder if they still make it. I have no idea. Mm. But, you know, these were treats when I were a kid. <laughs> yeah, I remember those as well. <laughs> we're really beginning to hear the water now, which is nice. Now, I seem to have walked myself into a mire of wet and rotting seaweed. Got myself on the wrong side of all that rotting seaweed. Gonna smell nice in the car. <laughs> Found a lovely bone. All right, a wee seagull bone. I guess so, yeah. Let's have a peek. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna make anything with that, right? No, no, I'm, I'll probably leave it here, but it's really nice and smooth and it's really white as well. That's actually quite nice to that. We should leave the bone lady behind. <laughs> Well, that's a wee fishing boat. I'm guessing, given that our broth is just up the coast from us, that it might be heading back to harbour there. Bouncing about a bit in the water. Oh! Oh, Nicole's just found something. Let's swing back around and see what that is. Yeah, and I'm going to pick it up. That is a really lovely drop of sea glass. A perfect mermaid's tears. We are taking that. So here's that big wishing stone that I'm going to trace around it and when I do I'm just going to wish that everybody stays safe and happy and well. So good luck. Thank you all so much for watching, liking and commenting on the videos. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please take a second to subscribe to the channel. It's dead easy to do that and it really helps us out. Huge thanks too to everyone who's helped us out through Etsy, Amazon and through Kofi. That makes a massive difference to us. It helps us pay for the equipment that we use to make these films and it just helps pay for the petrol and it keeps us going. So thank you all so much for doing that.